those of you who don't know me, my name's Miss Corey. Um, for those of you who do know me, hello, it's me, Corey. I miss you guys so much, and I miss seeing you. I snuck into our classroom today, and I just wish that you guys were all here, being loud and jumping on everything. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a story in the Bible that has something similar to a unicorn in it. Not exactly a unicorn. But first, I want you to get comfortable. Make sure you're sitting next to someone who will help you pay attention, just like in class. And I want you to think about, if you only had 24 hours left on this earth to live, you only have 24 hours and you can do anything you want, what would you do? So maybe you would go skydiving, or I would think it'd be really fun to go skydiving. Or maybe you would drive to California and jump in the Pacific Ocean. I love the Pacific Ocean. Um, I want you to think about what you would do. Today, it, we're gonna learn about a man who knew that he only had a couple days left to live and we're gonna see what he did. Um, okay, so question for you. How many books are in the Bible? Think of a number in your head. I want you to um, put the number with your fingers behind your back. You can do double digits if you want. So, uh, oh, I guess it won't really work if you do. Uh, but if you want like 12, you can do one, two, 12. Okay, think of a number. Did you say two? There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. Did you say 66? Because there's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. It's kind of a trick question. Because we know that although there are many books, we call them books, but they're kind of more like chapters because what we know is that the Bible, even though it was written over many periods of time, a long period of time, many years. It's actually one big story. It's a rescue story, right? Is how we talk about it sometimes. And so I want you to think about last week, if you tuned in last week, you heard Mr. Darren talk about a prophet, a messenger from God who wrote the book Obadiah, what we call Obadiah. And uh, although today the story I'm going to tell you is from the book that we call John, John wrote it, uh, it starts way, 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 way before then. It actually, I want to read you um, from a book called Zechariah. I don't think we've talked about Zechariah in Sunday school yet. Um, but it's a sentence from a book called Zechariah, and this was, so our story today is from John, but this was about 500 years before our story took place, and this is what it says. Zechariah was a prophet, just like Obadiah, and he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout out loud, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna, he's here, he's here. Attention, attention, tell your friends, everybody, the Messiah, he's here, Jesus is here. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> so, 500 years before Jesus came to Jerusalem, Zechariah said that Jesus was going to come, the Messiah would come, riding on a donkey. 
And that's what he did. 500 years later, in the book of John, like I said, our lesson today is from John, starts in chapter 12. John chapter 12 says, The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. So Jesus came to Jerusalem just like the prophets had predicted hundreds of years before that. He came riding on a donkey. He was the king. He was the Messiah, the one that his people had been waiting for. He would come and he would defeat the enemies. He would reign victoriously. He would be triumphant, just like God's people had been talking about for so, so, so many years before that. Now, when Jesus got to Jerusalem, he came riding on a donkey. His friends were ecstatic. They threw him a huge party. It was like a thing they did back then. They waved palm branches. That's what we call today Palm Sunday. They waved palm branches and threw him a parade, and he rode in on a donkey. But when Jesus got to Jerusalem, he knew that he only had a couple of days left on this earth. And so we're going to read about what he did with only a couple of days left. Surprisingly, he did not go skydiving. He didn't go swim in the Pacific Ocean. He actually threw his friends a little dinner party. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you.
God's people were waiting for a king. They were waiting for someone who would come and rescue them and save them from their enemies. What Jesus was, was a servant, a servant king. He came and instead of with a sword to kill all of his enemies, he came with a basin of water to wash his friend's feet. Because Jesus knew that what Peter needed way more than washing his feet was washing his heart. Jesus washed his friend's feet to show them that just like their dirty, dirty feet that they had stepped in cow poop throughout the day, <laughs> that people like Peter and people, people like me and people like you and your mom and your dad and your brothers and your sisters and since the beginning of time people were born not just with dirty feet but with dirty hearts and a desire to run away from God. And thankfully, because we know the Bible is one big story, God had a plan before the beginning of time. At the very, very, very start of it all, God had a plan to come and save his people from his sin because God knew that there is nothing that we can do, that there's no amount of soapy water or big enough bucket to clean our hearts. God knew it would take something so much more extreme. And that's why he sent Jesus. So today, we celebrate the start of what we call Holy Week. And it's the time that we think about, we spend a lot of time just thinking about why did Jesus have to come to earth? And why did it take something like dying to rescue us? And we'll learn about that on Good Friday and we'll learn the best part of the whole story, the most exciting day of the entire year on Sunday when we celebrate that Jesus actually didn't just die on the cross, but he rose again and he defeated all of our sin and all of our death. And we'll learn about that next week.